while studying economics at Dartmouth College in the United States. Mahmoud Johnson came across a study that he said was an eye-opener. I came across some study that USAID had done here in Liberia where they found that I think about 35% of the, the palm fruit remain on the trees every year without being harvested uh, because there are so many bottlenecks in the production process. And I also found out that um, when the farmers harvest the palm, they actually end up losing about 50% of the expected yield because again, uh, the way that they were producing the palm oil is not quite efficient. Upon his return to Liberia in 2013, that study set the then 22-year-old Mahmoud on a track to establish a business, J Palm, built around bringing efficiency to palm oil production. We were able to get uh, some machines, again, that sort of came to Liberia through a uh, USAID program, um, the Smallholders Oil Palm Support Project, where they trained local blacksmiths on how to make palm oil machines. He had some of these machines made for him that he then gave to palm oil producers in rural communities. Just by using these machines, farmers can help to, farmers can increase their yields by about 53%. So, Mahmoud was now in the business of selling palm oil in Monrovia that he bought from people using these machines. But he realized he could do more with a byproduct from palm oil production, the palm kernels, the edible seed of the palm fruit, which is encased in a hard outer shell. Now we have basically created a market for the palm kernels where we buy from them, enabling them to earn additional income from something that just a few years ago was uh, Treat it as waste. We began extracting oil from the kernels. That was the major ingredient in a series of J Palm skin and hair products sold on the local market and produced at his plant in Sinkor. It achieves two things, right? One is that it enables us to be able to create and sustain the jobs that we are creating. But then, number two, it helps us also to be able to um, sort of deepen uh, the impact that we are creating for the smallholder farmers. Initially, his products were sold in local supermarkets and by salespeople walking the streets. But about a year ago, he opened his own store in Sinkar. Now, with some donor assistance, Mahmoud is poised to take his business to a whole new level, where he will be exporting palm kernel oil to markets in Europe and the United States. And speaking about USAID, you know, I think uh, it sort of has come full circle where the company's founding was in a way informed by USAID research and now we are working more directly with USAID through the West Africa Trade Hub um, where we, uh, in, in association with Pacha Soap, a US based company, we're going to get a grant um, to, to fund our certification costs for organic. Um, so we, uh, as we go through the process right now, um, we hope that before the end of this year we'll get organic accreditation that enabled us to ex export our oils to U.S. market and to the European market. And what this means is that we're, we're going to be able to command a price premium relative to how palm kernel oil is sold on the general market. Organic palm kernel oil is sold at a higher price point and that will enable us to be able to pay more money to um, the farmers that, that we work with. To take advantage of his new export potential, Mahmoud is, with help from the United States Africa Development Foundation, now investing in setting up a modern palm kernel oil manufacturing plant outside Manga in Bong County. And we hope that within the next one to two weeks, the factory will be fully operational. Once it's operational, it'll be able to press um, it will be able to process about 25 tons of palm kernels per day and that is going to enable us to source palm kernels from mo almost all the communities in, in Bond County because right now most of those communities have no use for the palm kernels. The palm kernels are just uh, being uh, wasted right now. So that is going to serve as an additional source of income for the farmers that are uh, going to be supplying these palm kernels. He's been at this for nine years now and what's is the key lesson he's learned. What we've, what we've shown here is that it is possible to use our own natural resources in this country um, and add value and set up a manufacturing process that in, in turn helps us to create employment and, and also help us to help reduce poverty um, that many people in Liberia are currently facing. And so I'm very happy.
if Mahmoud Johnson is showing Liberians how to add value to local products, then the people of Tutata are showing how local communities can provide their residents reliable and affordable power. Since 2018, unlike many other rural communities, Tutata has had power provided by a hybrid solar and diesel generator plant. Sure, funding from USAID helped fund the plant, but its success today is due to the people here. They set up a cooperative, the Tutata Electric Cooperative, TEC, that owns the plant. Anyone who buys power from TEC is effectively a member of the cooperative's general assembly and can vote for members of the board that runs the cooperative. Members of the cooperative can also buy shares in TEC and share in its profits. I am one of the shareholders of TEC. TEC hired a manager to professionally run its operation. It also hired technicians to maintain the plant. We first started with uh, 188 uh, customers, but currently we are now at uh, 350 uh, 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 customers. TEC has set up a transparent system to account for and manage fees paid by its customers. Anyone with a phone and the TEC app can see in real time whenever a customer pays his or her electric bill and thus keep track of the company's finances. TEC has also set up a meter system that makes power theft virtually impossible. Thanks to prudent management, when a diesel generator broke down recently, TEC got another generator on a loan that it is now paying back. The availability of electricity here has brought life to Tutata and has been a boon for businesses. Everything we have here can freeze good to drink in the best cold water in Liberia now. The Tutata Health Clinic now runs its maternal child health unit without fear of power outage. So we are doing 24 hour service at the MCH where women come in any hour of the night and any hour of the day to give birth. Now TEC is looking to invest in expanding its generation capacity so that it can provide more households with electricity. Given its past record, this seems like something it is going to succeed at doing.